With Halo Infinite being a soft reboot of the Halo franchise, and with 343 revamping the art style and OST, how has the gameplay fed arguably the most important aspect of any game, regardless of genre, is the gameplay. What 343 have done is they have taken their design philosophies when it comes to player empowerment and then merged that with other aspects from previous Halo games to kind of create a hybrid of the two design philosophies. The two aspects that they have taken from their games and then merged with the previous Halo games are enhanced mobility and equipment. The reason why they went with enhanced mobility is because their design philosophies for all of their previous Halo games was to take power away from the sandbox and give it to the player, thus making enemies less threatening and easier to deal with. The reason why they have just keep going with the enhanced mobility even though a very vocal group of the Halo community has been sometimes demanding that it's been removed. But the reason why they keep sticking with it, although of what I've just said, is because that's the way they view how Bungie wanted to take the franchise into the future. Because remember that Reach was the game in the series that introduced Hans mobility and thus taking power away from the sandbox and giving it into the hands of the player, exclusively the player, and free for free to hook that and roll with it. And then you get Halo 4, which, yeah. <laughs> that was the criticism that people gave about it, was that they were taking power out of the sandbox and thus out of the hands of enemy AI, which subsequently made enemy encounters less enjoyable. Free for free still want that fourth pillar to support Halo. Since 3, the franchise has been experimenting with added on from the core grenades, melee, shoot, the three pillars of the previous two Halo games. And Free for Free's attempt at that was enhanced mobility. Same with Bungie's in Reach. And they still want that fourth pillar because if you think about this logically, you can see where they're coming from. You don't want a franchise to stagnate, which is what presumably what Free for Free fear would happen if they just did the three main pillars of Halo over and over again that the franchise would stagnate and people would become disinterested. A new element of gameplay that they've introduced, which is the feature from previous games, is equipment, which means there are now five pillars in Halo's combat loop. I should probably explain what the pillars of Halo are now. So three main pillars of Halo in 1 and 2 are grenades, melee and shoot. You can shoot, you can throw a grenade and you can melee. It's all what the player can do. And then the rest of the interactions come from the sandbox and that is what makes Halo a sandbox shooter is because the way it's interesting is because of all of the toys within the sandbox. Ever since 3, the franchise has tried to add a fourth pillar, whether that be equipment, armor abilities, whatever they're called in 5. And now you have 5 pillars which is something that has never been seen before within Halo. The reason why they've gone specifically for both equipment and enhanced mobility is because you are taking away power from the sandbox by adding enhanced mobility and allowing the player to sprint and the grapple shot now and throwing fusion coils, but then you give power back to the sandbox again by adding equipment which as we have seen is usable by enemy AI and they have said that all the interactions the player can do so can the enemy AI. That's why they've gone for the five pillar approach so that the two new pillars that they've added cancel each other out or at least theoretically I presume that's why they've chosen this approach. But unfortunately I think this was the wrong decision. That by trying to meet everyone halfway with this five pillar approach that they're taking they will unfortunately displease both sides of the argument. For example Sprint. The people who enjoy Sprint in Halo is because it's a core mechanic that the player has access to that no one else has access to and it adds on top of the power fantasy in a way that no other Halo has done. But for these people who enjoy this aspect of the power fantasy, they are now faced with the fact that Sprint is no longer 
as fast and as superhuman as it previously was which therefore makes it inferior to the sprint in previous games from that standpoint. Classic fans as well still won't like the slow down sprint because even though it's slowed down, the problems with sprint in Halo will still exist. You will still have this speed up, slow down gameplay loop and the fact that it's slowed down now may, may potentially make it even more clunky than it was in previous games. I've already said my opinion about the grappling hook before in my reaction video to the Halo Infinite gameplay demo, but I'll just repeat myself because I want to tidy everything up into one nice little bundle with this video. Thankfully, they haven't done like this Batman Arkham style of grappling hook where it's these pre-designated lock-on points that you could grapple a hook onto not necessarily every surface, but wherever you want, wherever you're looking, and when you press the grappling hook button, the grappling hook will fire out from where you are looking and won't snap to a corner or whatever. Now, admittedly, we know the grappling hook is going to work differently in the multiplayer compared to the campaign. However, I would be surprised if it's as drastic as what is not lock-on and what is. But within the campaign anyway, things seem to be very, very good. With the grappling hook, you can pick up fusion coils and then proceed to throw them at enemies, which is one of these things that Free for Free are doing to try and add more engagements between the player and the sandbox. So kind of nullify the power that's been taken away from the sandbox by enhanced mobility. It seems very balanced when you're grappling stuff you can't shoot either. Tossing fusion coils doesn't seem ridiculous, like you see a turret, just grab a fusion coil, yeet it, just destroys the whole turret. Nah, it seems to be very very balanced, it like kills the grunt inside the turret and that's all what it does. With the actual grappling hook in terms of you moving yourself about with it, using it as a method of traversal, well it seems to be very similar to Titanfall 2 where depending where you move your joycon if you're using a gamepad you will slightly alter your trajectory. Now, it does not appear to be as extreme as Titanfall 2, nor do I want it to be as extreme as Titanfall 2. There seems to be a lot of player agency in the direction you move with the grappling hook, which seems, which is exactly how I'd want it to be. When you're grappling onto enemies, it doesn't matter what size they are, you won't pull them towards you, you'll be pulled towards them. It's like the meat hook in Doom Eternal. So whether it's a grunt, a brute, or a hunter, you'll go towards them. In terms of the multiplayer, I think the grappling hook will severely hamper the level designers. Well, this also extends to the campaign, but predominantly the multiplayer this will affect. Because with enhanced mobility being a factor within your level design, you have to think about ways to prevent the player from escaping a lot more than without enhanced mobility in the equation. And, like, they talk about this within the sprint, uh, Halo 5's Vidos, where they talk about how they have to design levels in such a way that the player can't clamber, frost, spot and charge the way out of it. Now, admittedly, the enhanced mobility is toned down significantly in Infinite, but the grappling hook is a new thing that they're going to have to work on. I don't know whether or not it's going to be like there's certain surfaces you can't grapple onto and they can just set that as a material property and that would just be a quick fix or we're going to just design all the maps in such a way where you can't grapple out which I think will severely hamper the levels of creativity within the level design. I'm not saying enhanced mobility eliminates all creativity but I am saying that your freedom as a level designer to do crazy and fun ideas is severely hampered by trying to work out whether or not a player can just thrust and clamber out of your map. And in terms of it actually being broken within PvP encounters, no, it, it seems fine. I really hope you can grappling hook towards uh, vehicles and then hijack it as a hijack. Now that could, that could get really broken, but I imagine with stuff like banshees and uh, warthogs, but stuff like scorpions and wraiths, I feel like that would become an amazing counter towards them. I'm personally hoping to see that implemented. Just like Sprint, Slide has been nerfed heavily as well. And really, I don't have much to say about Slide, to be honest. However, I think if you're going to have Sprint, you also must have Slide, because it slightly nullifies the effects of the speed up, slow down issue that you have with Sprint within Halo. 
because when you are sprinting and you see an enemy instead of going out of the sprint to then shoot if you slide you maintain your momentum you change your profile as well making you harder to shoot and typically your gun comes up a lot faster combo this with other button presses to then fly across the map power sliding body hopping whatever you want to call it but this has been dulled down to an extent like everything when it comes to enhanced mobility in Halo Infinite because now you don't have thrust and spartan charge but I do think it is a necessary inclusion if you are going to have sprint clamber on the other hand oh god that is a complete and utter different story I personally believe that clamber should not be within any Halo game at all certain maps within Halo have a loose parkour theme throughout them and what Clamber does is it makes parkour extremely forgiving because now when you miss your jump instead of that's it you miss your jump you screwed up and you die now now it lowers the skill floor and it makes it so that if you miss your jump and you're close enough you can now clamber up the ledge to where you want to go now granted this can mean you can do further jumps now but previously with a jump where you either stuck the landing or you didn't there's a bit of a grey area between you stuck the landing or you didn't where you can clamber and in Halo 5 that was very very extreme I think it was like something like three times your height you could get up to with clamber which is ridiculous clamber also affects elevation where previously to get up to a high position you'd have to crouch jump now you can just jump and then clamber which yet again lowers the skill floor but thankfully clamber like everything in halo infinite i keep repeating myself with this but thankfully halo infinite is really dulling down the enhanced mobility so the impacts that clamber will have will be a lot lower we've now gone through all the bits of enhanced mobility that are in the game that we know of anyway so i just like to dedicate a bit of time to talk about the bits of enhanced mobility that sadly didn't make it in the transition from five to six starting this off let's talk about ADS. ADS is something that at least in how it was implemented in 5 simply should not exist in Halo for multiple reasons. It breaks the flow of so many game modes. can't remember what it's called but one of the official game modes 3 for free release where they doled down enhanced mobility and had some more classic-esque maps within it it was really good it was solid it was a fun time but every now and again an encounter would be ruined by ADS for example if you are jumping down and to attack a player get the jump on them from your height advantage and naturally your ADS to increase your position so you have another advantage but now you are stuck frozen in the air a potential easy snipe for somebody with a sniper or even just a regular old easy target for you to hit because now you're just rock solid there apart from being a bad idea to do it just ruins the pacing as well for you on your end it slows you right down another negative impact would be within griff ball before in Griff Ball, it was pretty predictable how close the distance that a enemy player would be able to hit you from. But with ADS in 5, it was incredibly sporadic. You now had to think about two potential scenarios. One where the player is ADSing with a gravity hammer and another where they're not. And this also extends slightly to infection, but I think it was less egregious in infection. A positive impact, in my opinion, that ADS had, just to play devil's advocate, was in infection. I mentioned it previously with it making the distance an infected could attack you a bit dodgy, but it did make it a lot easier to attack a group of players who were all camping on a high position, and you could chain this with things like slide and thrust, and it did make the mode a lot more interesting, in my opinion. To play Devil's Advocate, I think Infection is an improvement with Sprint. If you had asked me before the Halo Infinite campaign demo, I would have said Thrust would most definitely make a return. Thrust was one of the few enhanced mobility mechanics I thought would stay in Halo Infinite. And it hasn't returned. I would take Thrust any day over Clamber, but I think the removal of Thrust will help to bring Infinite back into a more classic feeling 
game because now enemy players will be a lot more cautious going into encounters because now they can't just thrust into a corner and recharge their shields or even dodge an ambush. It definitely will drastically slow down the game. Whether that's for better or worse remains to be seen. The two final pieces of enhanced mobility that did not make a return were Ground Pound and Spartan Charge. Both I wish I think is most definitely 100% for the better. Ground Pound was just a lot less skillful assassination or ninja, in all honesty. You can pull off exactly the same trick without Ground Pound, it's just a bit harder and I think increasing the skill ceiling is always a good idea. There should always be more ways to master the game. And then Spartan Charge as well. It was just annoying, like, you just you know, be sprinting around a corner and all of a sudden there's a dude there and he just Spartan Charges you, flings you back. You're still coming out of the sprint animation whilst he's already out of it and then he just bops you in the head with a precision weapon. Thank god that it is not returning. Now we finally got enhanced mobility out of the way. Let's talk about the third and fifth pillars of Halo. I've already explained why, in my opinion, 343 chose to bring back equipment, so I won't go over that again. Let's look at the individual pieces of equipment that have been revealed. This also goes for the new guns. I'm going off just what has been seen within the demo. We know for a fact that the campaign demo did not reveal all of the guns, for example. We know this from some of the Mega Block toy leaks, that at least one gun was not in the demo, that being that weird electric shotgun looking thing. In the demo, the first piece of equipment we were shown was technically the grapple shot, as 343 want to call it. The reason I say technically is because within the multiplayer, it is going to function as equipment. It is a, I guess, a one-time burn item that is lying around on the map for the player to find it and pick up. It's not an inherent ability like sprint. Or slide is. But if you're not being nitpicky then the first piece of equipment we were introduced to was the drop wall. And if I'm going to be honest the thing looks busted as anything. The reason why it's busted is because previous deployable covers within Halo have always stopped all projectiles. If you're behind it you can't shoot at the enemy and if you're in front of it you can't shoot at whoever deployed it. Though the drop wall differs in the fact that the aggressor cannot shoot at whoever deployed it, but the player who deployed it can shoot back at them. Which very obviously could lead to a situation to where, say, your spawn is being camped by a scorpion, for example. So you go and find a Spartan laser and a drop ball, you deploy the drop ball in front of the scorpion. The scorpion tries shooting it down, it starts taking damage, it's about to collapse. But you're fine because the Spartan laser charges all the way up before that point and then just beams the scorpion. Now obviously that's a positive example I guess, if you want to look at it that way, of killing a spawn camper with it. But even within a standard firefight, you can lock down a line of sight with this shield and then just you and your team can just unleash hell upon the enemy team from the safety of your wall, which is obviously a bit of a problem because they can't do anything about that. Yeah, they can shoot at it, but from what we saw in the demo, it will take more than a couple shots from just some basic firearms like the battle rifle to take down that shield. Perhaps you can do some EMP trick with like a noob combo or a plasma weapons, maybe it's more susceptible to plasma weapons just like energy shielding on Spartans, but obviously this is speculation and all the information that we have is coming just from the demo, and honestly we didn't get that much from the demo. Within the demo itself that was the only piece of equipment that was shown, however within the trailer that released on Fearful Free's YouTube channel alongside the demo, we saw the spiritual successor to the power drain. This version of the power drain works differently instead of EMPing everything in its area of effect it instead stuns them like for example the enemy AI went into a bit of a seizure animation when they were in the vicinity of this new version of the power drain and it seems to instead of 
EMP vehicles, it seems to stun the pilot instead, which basically has the same effect at the end of the day. From the heavily edited gameplay trailer that this new piece of equipment was revealed in, I couldn't tell whether or not it took down shields, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Theoretically, a skilled enough player will be able to dispatch the same amount of enemy players that they would of normally if this was a Halo 3-esque power drain. But admittedly, we don't know a lot about this new version of the power drain, so I could be completely wrong. That is just entire speculation there. So now I'll move into the third pillar, being guns, and starting off with the technically the newest gun is the sidekick. Now, people have been pretty upset about the sidekick, understandably, because it will be replacing the Magnum. Aesthetically, it just looks like a HD version of the Halo 2 Magnum, and functionally, it appears to be exactly the same as the Halo 5 Magnum, so it's the Magnum in all but name, basically. Which is a shame that it's not called the Magnum, but I suspect further down the line, just like the Spanker in Halo 5, a gun named the Magnum will make its way into Infinite. Shortly after we are introduced to the sidekick, we are then introduced to the Commando. The Commando is a very, very weird gun. It doesn't feel right. The two things I think people are referring to when they say it, quote unquote, doesn't feel right, is the aesthetics and its rate of fire. Now the aesthetics is something that is an easy fix, just make it bullpup. I think the aesthetics would be fixed in its entirety if it was bullpup and maybe the sight was switched out a bit, but that's it. Now the fire rate, on the other hand, that is even more important than aesthetics because it is an outlier in every single way when it comes to the actual mechanics of the gun. The reason why it is an outlier is because every single full auto gun in the franchise has been good at taking down shields and the commando is a full auto gun but it's also a precision weapon and every single precision weapon ever has been good at dealing with players once their shields have been taken down so now you have this really weird gun that doesn't feel quite right because it goes against the quote unquote rules that the franchise has established for, at this point, almost 20 years for how the guns behave. And outside of feeling weird, this gun is gonna upset the tryhards so much. They already took issue with the amount of full auto weapons within Five's sandbox. A full auto precision weapon is going to make it incredibly easy to get headshots. There is a reason why there is a significant number of people in Halo 4 SWAT running around with the Magnum. It is because you can get an extremely high fire rate and it is extremely easy for you to hit a headshot because if you miss once, doesn't matter, you'll get another shot. Now granted there is a lot of bloom in Halo 4, but there isn't with the Commando. Yes, the Commando's fire rate is slower, but the bloom is extremely low. In fact, it seems to practically disappear by the time it goes to fire another shot. And you can just turn off your brain, basically, place your crosshair out about player height, and just hold down the trigger, and you will get your kill, which requires a lot less skill than maintaining your headshots, readjusting your crosshair every time with guns like the Battle Rifle and DMR and the Carbine. And I would not be surprised if this gun it simply is not within matchmaking SWAT at all. Commando SWAT will be a nightmare, mark my words. But in standard unranked matchmaking, I don't see anyone complaining about it. It would just be really within ranked, lest anyone will complain. Shortly after we're introduced to the Commando, we are then shown the Ravenger. And the Ravenger seems to be a very fun and solid gun. I imagine it won't see too much use outside of the campaign. It'll be one of those guns that are made specifically for the campaign. But in the campaign, it seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. It's kind of like a better, I want to say, concussion rifle. Because the concussion rifle wasn't that great. You had to, like, spam click it to kill, like, a grunt. It did very little damage. And yes, that was not its intended use to kill enemy AI. It was kill infantry, it's supposed to be an anti-vehicular weapon I know, but 
at least in my experience, it was rarely ever used for that purpose, and just kind of fell to the wayside a bit. Although the Ravagers lost its concussive force, it nevertheless seems to be a very fun gun to use, and I can't wait to disintegrate some grunts with it. The next gun that we are shown is the Pulse Carbine. Most of my points on this gun we will get to in a bit, but from what we've seen, this is a replacement for the Plasma Rifle or Storm Rifle. The Pulse Carbine isn't a precision weapon. It's a full burst, I think, plasma weapon that fulfills the role that the Plasma Rifle and Storm Rifle used to fulfill. That's all I have to say without going into a massive tangent about redesigns and stuff, but we will get there. The penultimate new gun that is within the demo is the Mangler. The Mangler is going to be one of those guns that is within matchmaking, but is rarely ever used due to the fact that it's just not very viable in player-on-player -player encounters, like the Spiker. But within the campaign, at least, it seems to be a really good gun for picking off the grunts so that you then have some breathing room to tackle the brute or elite that was formerly in charge of all those grunts you just dispatched. I think I will personally be using this gun a lot more than I ever used the mauler. I think this shows yet another area where Free for Free taken on board constructive criticism, because previously their approach to weapon balancing is everything can kill good, which leads to like the plasma pistol being a competent weapon, which has never been the case before, and although in some games, yes, you want every gun to kill well, in Halo, a sandbox shooter, you don't want this. Guns fulfill more of a utility, instead of a one-gun solution to every single situation. You have the gun that you use to drain the enemy player's shields to follow up with a headshot, for example. That's the role that the Plasma Pistol, Assault Rifle, and Plasma Rifle have played in previous games, for example. Or you have the gun to deal with lighter vehicles, the Brute Shot and Concussion Rifle. Not every single gun is designed to be a perfect killer, but in Free for Freeze games, their take on balancing weapons was, if kill good, gun good. Which, although yes, that is the case, if kill good, gun good, the sandbox becomes a lot more uninspired and interested when that is the case. The fact that they're willing to add guns into the game, which will rarely ever be used within the multiplayer, is a, a good sign that they are taking on board this criticism, which seems to be a massive theme with Infinite, that they have taken on board feedback and are changing to match said impact. And finally, the last gun that was showcased within the demo is the Bulldog. The Bulldog is, for all intents and purposes, a redesign of the shotgun, and because of that, functionally it's practically identical, except for one way. With the old shotgun, you would load the individual shells in, but the Bulldog has a drum. What this seemingly minor change does, is it now means instead of being able to place one shot shell into the gun and then cock it, ready to fire, you now have to reload the whole drum, and then you're able to cock it, which on the surface doesn't seem like a big deal, but when you get to like gamers like Infection for example, when you're like the last man alive and there's just a horde of infected coming your way and you only have one time to reload the shell, cock the gun and then fire, reload and so on and so forth, you're never getting a proper breather. Now, because it's a drum with the bulldog, you're having to reload the whole drum, cock the gun and then you can fire how many shots is within the drum. But the problem is, the animation is slower for reloading the drum than it is a single shell with the old shotgun. Now the reason it is slower is because now you're reloading all the shells within the shotgun when you're reloading a single drum. To make sure that the shotgun is balanced the same way that it was previously, the animation is now slowed so that the time it takes to have all your shotgun shells ready is the same regardless of which version of the shotgun it is. And it just begs the question, why do 3 for 3 have to change things that were perfectly fine as they were? And in some cases, swap it for something inferior. They've done this with the carbine, so now instead of sticking with the storm rifle or bringing back the plasma rifle, by introducing the carbine, the carbine probably won't make a return now. For, for the very 
the same reason that I am over pronouncing carbine and carbine because it will be incredibly hard to tell which one is which because you've got not only are their names very similar but their silhouettes are now as well which will lead to player confusion so more likely than not the carbine won't be an infinite the simple fact that 343 went with the carbine instead of the storm rifle or the plasma rifle two perfectly adequate options and it was like the same in 5 where they replaced the design of the spanker when they kept it in 4 now obviously I get they were trying to take the franchise in their own direction with a new art style and everything but with these two examples in Infinite it's seemingly for no other reason than for the sake of change because these redesigns aren't just aesthetical they are changing how these guns operate now yes maybe to the same effect but these changes do have a knock-on effect in some areas maybe not as wide-reaching and as drastic as I'm making it out to be but these are changes that are having an effect nevertheless ultimately all these points I bring up don't matter if you still enjoy the game and have fun with it then who am I to judge so if you disagree with me or even if you agree type in the comments why you do try and change my mind even Obviously, please try and keep your discussions civil. YouTube, do delete your comments for quote-unquote cyberbullying. Yeah, it sucks, but it is what it is, I guess. And if you could do all the normal YouTube things, that would be very much appreciated. And I didn't talk about vehicles in this video for a very good reason. They didn't show in the demo. We don't know how they'll function in gameplay at all yet. So I obviously can comment, but I do have a video where I speculated a wee bit on what vehicles could look like within Infinite. If you click the video in the top left, you can watch that. And and I will see you in the next one.